This is originally a gemlog post, which you can find a link to in the description if you want a text version of this. Hoshino Umi no Amori is one of the most bizarre anime I've ever seen. I have no clue what happens in this anime. I have very little understanding of how it got made in the first place. I do not even know if I love it or hate it. Let's get some introductions out of the way up front. This is the boring part where I fully went on the background details. Hoshino Umi no Amori, hereafter shortened to Hoshi Amu, English title Amori and Star Ocean, is a 2008 three episode OVA from Studio Hibari. Hibari have brought us some strange things in the past, like the batshit Fight Ipatsu Juden chan, so it's not that surprising to find out they were involved here. It's directed by Yoshitomo Yonetani, who we'll be coming back to later. The synopsis reads, Quote, the 3D modeled anime is set in year 019 of the Insonity Progressive Revolution, a future era in which mankind has evolved into a new species called Adapters. Three very young Adapter girls from Japan, China, and France set out on a space adventure that will affect the rest of their species. If that seems vague and confusing, get used to that feeling. But here we do glean our first nugget of intrigue. This is a 3D modeled anime. Now I don't think this is the first 3D CG anime, just off memory I know the platonic chain came out in 2002. That show sucks ass by the way. However, this does seem to be the first full 3D CG Moe Bishoujo anime, and well, that's something I guess. So here's what I'm not sure if I'm really weird or if I'm just actually onto something. I picked this show up in the first place because I really like the character designs. Uh, you should go watch the show by the way, like just go watch the first five minutes of the first episode at least so you can like get a feel from what I'm talking about. I mean I can show video up on here because it's YouTube, not Gemini, uh, but like, go watch the show, it's just three episodes, okay? It's fucking weird, you'll have, I don't know if you enjoy it, but you'll get something out of it, maybe, you might not, I don't know. The first thing I noticed about the show beyond the character designs is that holy shit, the show is kind of beautiful. Like, the first few minutes of that first episode have some really striking posing and framing and creative use of light and colour and some surprisingly dynamic animation. There are definitely some moments where the age of the 3D tech is sorely on display, and I've heard it said that Hoshiyamu looks like a PS2 cutscene, but hey, if that's true, it's a really fucking pretty PS2 cutscene. Okay, to be fair, it doesn't look good all the time, but the lows aren't really that low. Given the strength of the character and environment design, even the less exciting shots still look appealing. That is, to me at least. Your mileage may vary. The second thing I noticed about the show is that I had no fucking clue what was going on. I won't bore you by trying to describe what I could pass, again, just go watch it, but I will say that it is an experimental sci-fi Maho Shoujo narrative with a fun cast of cute girl characters doing stuff in space. There are some Yuri elements, but nothing super fleshed out in that direction. It's mostly just weird. Yonetani san, please explain what the fuck this anime is about. <laughs> so, with the help of Google Translate, I've done some digging with interviews that Yonetani san gave at the time that this show was made, mainly from the show's website, which is somehow still up. Uh, link on screen. Uh, here are some quotes uh, I've been suffering from hay fever since childhood. When I'm dressed like this, the director wears a large mask and anti-pollen sunglasses during the interview, everyone laughs at me saying, hey hey director, don't be silly. Ever since I was in elementary school, the pollen season has been tough, and I've been ridiculed by the people around me. In episode 1, there's a scene where Amori, who was skating, repels the ice rink and spins around. Amori desperately wants to help me, but everyone around her is laughing. In my sadness, Amori is my alter ego. But I think the number of people with allergies will continue to increase in the future. That's the theme. In relation to allergies, can it be overcome? Should we get along? Or should it be used effectively? What is the right thing to do? I am raising an issue. There are beautiful girls, there are side fight and in addition to that it also tackles social satirical themes properly so hold on a fucking minute it's about hay fever if you just come back after watching the show I know, I know there's basically no way that you would ever have understood that that was what the show was about we both know you didn't actually watch the show because some random in the internet told you to no one actually does that anyway after learning this I guess it makes sense like each of the main characters like x-men mutant style ability superpower things that are not really superpowers, but I guess they could be considered like parallels for allergic reaction. It's very fucking obtuse though. <laughs> 
it kind of makes sense. It's just a strange thing to make an experimental sci-fi bishoujo anime about, that's all. I think this man might be a little bit insane. The good type of insane, that is. I mean, according to these interviews, no one working on the project had ever made a 3D animation before. The studio completely upended its entire workflow. People learned new software and tools just to make this, whatever this is, just to explore what might happen in relation to allergies in the future. It's beautiful, honestly. It's amazing. I, I, another quote from, from Yonatani-san here. Uh, also, when the project was first launched, it was a time when Studio Hibari didn't have a CG department. The staff had absolutely no experience with animation, so he had to teach them not only the basics of moving images in animation, but also ordinary camera work, layout creation techniques, and CG creation know-how, so it took a lot of time. Rice field. Yeah, I don't know why it just says rice field in the end there, but that's what Google spat out. Okay, so, some some closing thoughts. Uh, you know, upon re-watching the show to write this, I think I've decided that contrary to my statement in the opening paragraph, I do know that I actually love this show. It's so weirdly ahead of its time, and yet also perfectly of its time. There are genuinely cool sci-fi concepts, which don't really make any logical sense, but are somehow emotionally satisfying, like the air candy in episode one. Well, I guess it's throughout the whole show, but whatever. Uh, I like how the scale of the narrative can be unexpectedly huge at times, but the focus on character keeps the show intimate. The plot is definitely hard to follow. The problem isn't not knowing what's happening, but why it's happening or what it means. Like, from a cause and effect standpoint, I can see what's physically happening, I just sometimes don't know what it means that that thing is happening, like what caused it, what effect it will have, and so on. It's, it, things just sort of happen, you know? <laughs> you just kind of have to accept it. But it, as like a tone piece, it works. You know, like, you can get an emotional vibe of what's going on, even if you don't know literally what's going on. And I think that's okay, you know, there's lots of experimental films and anime that are like that. I, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be like that, I can't tell, but it works as that, you know. I think this is kind of a problem that was caused by just not having enough time in three episodes to explain all the information you need. Like, okay, here's a, here's a quote. Um, it was difficult to create an environment that could secure a production line for the TV series and the physical strength of the production company was still immature, so it was not possible to secure a system to make a movie. I think the OVA is the limit. So basically they, they wanted to make a TV show, but uh, they they couldn't, they, they weren't in an environment where they could do it. And then they thought about making it into a movie, but the, the studio didn't have the, the strength, like the, the buying power, you know, the, uh, the, the clout. To, to pull investors for a movie, so they basically were forced to make a short OVA. Um, but, you know, yonatani san explains in some of the interviews that he thinks that's probably for the best, that they don't, he doesn't think they could have managed a TV show with the, the team that they actually had. Um, anyway, in the end, the girls are cute, which is really what matters.